So everybody, welcome to the uh, in conversation with the uh, with RD today. We are very happy that she's here with her group. Uh, her to uh, Tony Watts, her mentor and fellow artist Susan, whom we all admire. Um, so RD, when you're ready, you can just take it away and share with us your. <laughs> okay, so RD is going to talk to us about her mentoring journey, uh, how it has been so far, and and. Uh, what he has done for her, the before, the during, and the after. So take it away, Jess. You know, uh, to make it a little entertaining and not very boring for all of you guys, um, I, I'm not as good as what Judith had done previously. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she has set the benchmark really, really high. But, um, you know, trying to match up with her <laughs> potential. What I've done is, you know, um, and when I when I thought about it, um, uh, you know, right before when Dorothy said it's going to be your session, um, I thought it's it's better that I give you a visual of the journey of how it was and how gilding happened to me because you know a lot of people who had asked when I started my gilding journey, how did you get into gilding? But I, you know, the answer would always be, uh, I think gilding hooked me and gilding got me into it. And then, of course, Tony happened, which was a huge, 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 huge blessing for me. And then there was never, you know, I, I never looked back after that. So um, let me show you something that, um, and then, you know, I, I, I basically uh, made it like, you know, what happened when gilding started, what happened after when I first learned how to gild, and then what are we doing as giddy gilders? So, you know, let, let, let's play this movie in three parts, right, Dorothy? Dorothy, would you mind sharing the um, screen, share screen? Okay, got it, got it, got it, I got it. I hope you all are able to see it. Okay, not this one, sorry. <laughs> Please patiently wait. Yeah, there. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, Tony is here, Three Giddy Gilders, and this is how it started. This was a journey that started in January uh, 20, uh, no, sorry, March 2020, right, Sue? Uh, March 2020, we had the uh, workshop with Tony in Singapore, hosted by Sue. So that is where my actual uh, journey with gilding started. And, uh, you know, here is what we did in the workshop. So we, here is where I learned for the first time how shell gold was made. And I was mesmerized. You know, we are making the shell gold here. So this was all very new to me. And yes, you know, the fingers did, you know, it felt like it would fall off. And then here is how shell gold was made. And, you know, we see those little flakes of gold. Now, this is the first time that I'd ever seen how to, you know, make gesso. So, you know, uh, I had no idea how gesso was made. We learned it in the workshop and it was so fascinating. But then, you know, what you see here is um, nothing in motion, but then this is hard work. I mean, uh, like I said, you know, initially the finger was to fall off and then the arm. You know, I've got strong arms now. <laughs> So, you know, we are making sure before we uh, lay the gesso, what we did, you know, we, we burst the bubbles and then um, we laid it on the paper to test if the gold would stick on it. That's our weapon. <laughs> All the weapons that we use during the gilding session. That is the first letter that I gilded um, during the uh, workshop. Um, don't ask me who K is. <laughs> and there we go with step by step, you know, all the things that you see here was, you know, I, I, I did that all for the first time. I had no clue. We were just following what Tony asked us to. And it was getting fascinating, you know, uh, with each passing day. Here are some pieces that I created during the workshop. So, uh, and it, get, it got smaller and smaller and smaller. Tony would talk about it and tell you about it later. We also learned about, you know, these medieval techniques of how, um, you know, during that period, people used to um, lay gesso and, uh, you know, uh, then apply gold over it. So they used the quill and we learned how to cut it, how to, you know, um, yeah, those are the techniques or the details that Tony taught us. 
and we had absolute absolute pleasure during this entire thing it was every like i said you know it was like i i went back to school it was like i was in kindergarten very excited to learn that's the master laying the goal and you would see that you know we were all around the table taking a video of what tony was doing <laughs> you see how the gold is laid and you know that's where that's that's exactly where i got hooked <laughs> gilding probably you know uh, got to me and i couldn't i couldn't leave it after that i had to i had to do something now you know what happened really after the workshop you know uh, do you do you really want me to continue dorothy or okay <laughs> okay so what happened after the workshop is i came back and the pandemic began okay so these are some of the pieces that i had created after i came back you know with the gesso that i had um and the pieces that we had decided that we'll complete after we go back home so this was the clay that i had started i finished after i came back you know you see the fear that i had you know it started really small when i started making the pieces and then it started becoming i started letting go and it started becoming bigger but then you know there was some gap that i could see that you know it was not as smooth as i saw tony laying it it was not as shiny it was the the uh, burnisher was not you know there was no mirror uh, effect or mirror shine of the you know gesso or the gold i can see my face rather you know so i was very very upset but i had to go on because if i had stopped there i don't think um i would have reached where i have today <laughs> okay so this 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 was the most fascinating part and you know tony happened and uh, dorothy happened and uh, the art of letters happened and we three giddy gilders happened this was um in 2021 april um the three giddy gilders formed the team and this was my first time making my own gesso you know little did i uh, realize or think that in january 2020 march 2020 i had a workshop an eight day workshop i got it all back and the pandemic started we were all locked you know inside our houses trying to make use of all the things that we had learned and you know put them to use and learn further but then you know having a mentor constantly you know holding her holding your hand and taking you ahead um this 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 was a huge change that i could see i never imagined that i would be making my own gesso so that was the first time i made my gesso i tried it but then again you know the little squealing arti behind the scenes making her gesso <laughs> laying the cakes there and trying it out that was the first time with i tried the gesso now when i look at the goal here and the goal that i laid in 2020 when tony wasn't there with me you know or uh, you know we didn't form the three giddy gilders i couldn't i was very hesitant to ask actually you know tony about all the questions that i had on my mind i didn't want to bother her but then i got the official ticket <laughs> sorry tony <laughs> i got the official ticket that you know i could but you know um having said that i never saw tony you know ever saying i'm not willing to tell you this i don't have the time to teach you this you know she was very very generous even before after during the pandemic we had conversations and it encouraged me tremendously to you know reach a place where i could see my goal shine finally you know the mirror effect that i was looking for although i know i have a uh, tony would find a lot of flaws in and i'm sure so do i <laughs> but i'm i'm on the right path if i may say that i'm on the right path i can feel it now so you know some bold experiments that i did with different leaves with the way uh, the thinness of it playing with the calligraphy um that i had been with for the last 2 years how to blend calligraphy with the gold or gilding that i learned and now what is it like being a giddy gilder i'll stop here um, dorothy you know <laughs> we'll come back to this part you know if if anyone so, has any anything to ask or anything to say or you know they can they can probably go ahead and because being a giddy gilder is a different ball game <laughs> if you have any questions you would agree with have, me feel free to unmute and ask arabi directly uh anything about what she has shared so far so i need to 
to summarize, um, RD was introduced to gilding through serendipitously through Susan's uh, uh, what a, a workshop that Susan organized where Tony was there, and 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 thereafter how how RD came to be in a mentoring group uh, under Tony was also very interesting because when I had this idea about mentoring. Um, uh, I, I approached Tony thinking that, you know, gilding, it's traditional gilding is such an endangered uh, uh, craft, you know, and, and it, I felt that it would be a waste if it didn't carry on, if the legacy doesn't continue, or if, if only a certain people of a certain uh, culture or nationality had access uh, to resources and information, you know, so with that in mind, the, the mentoring initiative uh, kind of like took, took shape. And when I asked Tony about this, uh, she had the same person uh, in mind, the, the same name that I had. And, uh, you know, both of us thought about RRD for gilding, you know, and it was such a, such an amazing, I think, coincidence. Uh, I remember calling RRD and then she was literally in tears. Um, is it okay to say that? <laughs> I mean, who would imagine, you know, someone sitting in the UK, someone sitting in Singapore and, you know, the, the weird part was Dorothy, I think you had never spoken with Tony before. Hmm. And, you know, it was like, um, um, I don't know, probably I can only say that, um, I don't know, Tony, can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I don't know what's he going to say. Yeah, you know that. I've, I've spoken with you. I've spoken with you on that. You know, the first day that I met Tony, you know, the, I don't know if 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 you guys have felt that. Uh, the first day I met Tony, it felt like I knew her already. You know, the first time I hugged her and I greeted her and she welcomed me like you know the mama bear. You know, it was, I, I can't I can't explain. I can't explain. <laughs> I miss you, Tony. <laughs> I can't explain the feeling, you know, and it was like, and um, I had met Sue before, but unfortunately, we didn't get to spend a lot of time before this because it was some other, uh, uh, you know, workshop someone else was hosting. Uh, we were both participants and we were so busy doing our own thing. And unfortunately, we didn't have much time to speak to each other. But this, this uh, workshop was extremely special one like I said you know it was it was um like I I I met somebody who whom I had known for I don't know at a soul level I had known for uh, I don't know ages and then uh Sue and me we made a very very wonderful connection and you know we we spoke art we uh you know it was like so many things happened in those eight days and suddenly you know the world the world kind of closed down and that was the only thing. And it was a blessing, actually, you know, that I, we all got to take back. I remember there were a lot of people who couldn't attend that workshop because their countries were shut down. And I had a conversation with Sue right before the workshop that, you know, what do you think? What is the situation in Singapore? Do you think I should travel? And I remember fighting with my husband <laughs> that, you know, I don't know I'm going. You know, you abandon me. You, you, you know, don't, don't, you know, take me back. I'm going. <laughs> you know it was some kind of calling I just couldn't um you know the, I don't know it was probably serendipity or whatever you call it so you know I had to be there um in that room the energy was so wonderful it it you know it it kind of um took us all through that year of turmoil you know 2020 was extremely difficult for all of us um, a lot of people you know lost a lot of uh, their loved ones and it was it was something which no one had ever experienced so you know to to stay sane you know tony had given us a lot of work <laughs> so, and and you know we stayed in touch and she was so encouraging and you know um we talked a lot apart from gilding as well you know so there was a lot of lot of things that kept me going and that that kept my mind off of a lot of things so I think you know it was it was meant to be if I can say that <laughs> Tony do you want to weigh in on what she's sharing at this point yeah I think the the workshop in Singapore was very special actually brilliantly organized by Susan I have to say and the pair of us took oh we must have emailed each other you know, a couple of times a week for a year organising that workshop. So there was a vast amount of work that went into it. And, um, you know, that's what made it work so well. 
um, actually it was brilliantly set up. And uh, I always joke with Susan and say we got we got to eat the best food ever <laughs> in Singapore. <laughs> really good food but the workshop was fabulous and there was I think it's it's probably the my most favorite workshop Ooh, I've, thank I've you done. and I've done a lot of workshops over the years um but we did have a we did have a good time and we got back to the UK I think a week before lockdown here so we got back into the UK and everything was in turmoil here and, and we were locked down and it was suddenly, wow, I, you know, I've come from this amazing workshop to um, the chaos that has been in the UK ever since, really. Um, so, yes, I think, you know, there, there was an element of, um, you know, Artie was there and then Dorothy contacted me and there was, you know, there was Susan and Artie and there was this feeling of it was all meant to be. And we've tackled this very much as a, a collaborative um, group. Um, you know, we, we all do our own work. So rather than me being mentor in a kind of, um, you know, you must do so-and-so, you know, you must do this. It's been a much more collaborative exchange of ideas. Um, and we've done a lot of talking and quite a lot of laughing, hence the three giddy guilders. Um, but gilding is difficult. It's difficult. Traditional gilding is difficult. And um, it's an endangered craft in the UK. And before I came on this call, I had a look at the, I've got a bit of paper here, at the Heritage Crafts Association red list of endangered crafts. And they define a heritage craft um, as a practice which employs manual dexterity and skill and an understanding of traditional materials, design and techniques, which has been practiced for two or more successive generations. So we're looking at old skills here and there just aren't that many people who use those skills now. Um, and they, you know, the Heritage Crafts Association here estimate the number of people who are gilding traditionally. So this is using the old techniques, the two generations past techniques. So this is not Instacol and, you know, all the rest of it. You see, you see such a lot of gilding with modern techniques on, on um, Instagram. So this is not that. This is something entirely different. Um, so they reckon that the Heritage Crafts Association reckon that the current number of prof professionals making their main income from illumination, there are two or three people, and I'm one of those. Wow. Yeah. Uh, current wow. number. Of, and, you know, I, I sat and thought about this and thought, who does make a living from illumination these days? Yeah, you know, there's me, there's Tim Node um, with his calligraphy. Christabel Anderson, um, she also does icon writing and enamelling, phenomenally talented. Patricia Lovett. Um, and then there are a few people overseas, Ivano in Italy, a couple of uh, Australians, um, Tanya Crossingham in Finland, but I don't think she uses gesso. Uh, so there are, there are actually very few of us who make a living from illumination. Um, there are a lot of calligraphers who do some illumination as well. Mm. Um, and some of those people use traditional techniques and some of them use more contemporary techniques. But um, I think the reason people don't do a lot of traditional illumination is that it's difficult. And uh, listen, look at Artie nodding. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, you know, it'll go well one day and then not well the next day. And that is just the name of the game, really. It's tricky. Um, so you see these things on Instagram that have been done with you know, something like Instacol or acrylic gold size and people photograph them so that they look nice and shiny. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about here. These are traditional, um, you know, the old medieval um, skills that um, were used in medieval Europe. I can't hear you, Dorothy, you're on mute. No, I said it's amazing. I mean, I, I, I did hear from Arvi about the difficulties that she was having trying to uh, recreate 
gesso in her humidity, in her environment, experimenting with the different medium and how painfully frustrating it was and how thankful she was that she had this group to go back to, you know, to yeah. uh, test and just to have somebody to shoulder to cry on, I suppose, who understands, like Tony would say, oh, don't worry, you know, it happens to me too. And then she will feel like, oh my goodness, you know, even Tony has failure, so, you know, I can, uh, I can press on, right, Ardi? It's true. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. You know, it 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 made it made it so much easy. Not just not just the part that you know, uh, Tony said that I failed. Um, the the appreciation that I had for this art after I came back because I tried really hard um, recreating what we did in those last eight days of workshop. You know that we had in Singapore, and. You know, there it was easy, right? I mean, you make a, you, you, you do something, um, there's a mistake, uh, the mentor is standing right there. You can go back and say, you know, can you please tell me what went wrong? And she would correct it, you would learn. But then the next time, the mistake that happens is very different from what happened in those eight days. Now, where do I go? What do I do? And, you know, um, being the thinking mind that, you know, we all have, I, again, you know, kept thinking, Okay, I did this step one right, step two right. I had to go back to my notes, check my notes, you know, everything went right. Now, what did I do wrong? You know, so that frustration that stayed and you, you could see it through the process that in between um, stage where I had come back and before I, um, you know, joined this team of, you know, Gilly Gilders, there were so many failures. The, the work that you see there was not perfect, you know. And I knew, and I wanted to keep doing it just because I wanted to make new mistakes. I wanted to ask questions, but you know, I had made an, I had made a list of it, and I knew, you know, one day probably I'll ask Tony, I'll trouble her, <laughs> and you know, it, it kind of probably the universe wanted me to, you know, make a huge list and then say, okay, I give you an ear, stay with Tony, <laughs> ask all your questions you know, keep making mistakes. So that kind of helped me a lot, you know, because it put rest to the things that I had in my head bubbling. Um, and like Tony said, um, I bet you guys, you know, what you see on Instagram is extremely beautiful. But what goes behind that? How many papers did we toss? How many times we did try to guild? And, um, you know, let me tell you, it is not, it is not a very cheap you know, <laughs> hobby. Oh. It is not a cheap hobby. If you are serious, you need to go there. Otherwise, find something else which suits you because, you know, Instagram is not we are aiming for. I mean, at least, you know, um, if, 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 you, if you see me, I'm, I'm really, really bad at that. Clicking pictures, you know how bad it is. And sometimes I know, you know, it is extremely, extremely shabby work. But I need a record of it to see how am I progressing. You know, I need Tony and, you know, probably some uh, mentor to constantly keep guiding me that, you know, um, I know. And, and you know, it's it's so instant that, you know, the moment I show send a picture to Tony, Tony instantly knows what went wrong. That's years, years and years of experience and knowledge that, you know, I'm so grateful to, you know, have an experience and learn from. So, yeah, yeah. That's and, because and, all, you know, all... and I have two of them. Not just Tony, I've got Sue as well, who has made those mistakes probably long, long back. And, you know, she has, <laughs> she has been through all the shit that I'm going through right now. So, you know, it's like, it's so assuring. I have a, you know, cushion under me, you know, I can fall. You know, I can bounce back, I can fall. I can ask questions and they are so generous to, you know, let me know and let me correct, um, you know, what I made. And um, I, I, you know, make sure that it is not wasted. And I do it again and I, you know, send it back to Tony and ask, is it okay now? <laughs> what do I do? And even, even you know, it's not just um, for humidity. I have, I have Sue as a huge support because, you know, the humidity conditions in Singapore, India is almost, you know, it's, it's the same. So I know, you know, okay, Sue has made this mistake. So what do you do to, you know, get the gold stick to the corners? What did you do? <laughs> How did you, how did you, you know, try doing this? And, you know, she, she's so willing to help and support. So it's, it's amazing. A, it's amazing. We have a question, Ardi. Uh, Dr. Nan is saying it's so lovely to see your learning process, given the fact that perhaps not all the products you needed were ready, uh, readily available where you live. What would you estimate was your total cost 
to get to where you are <laughs> i didn't i didn't go back to up is all i would say it is expensive i did mention it that you know it is expensive um i don't know if you could if you could you know and and also i would like to mention that you know i had to try different goals from different places not all goals are good you know i didn't work in my climate i had to put layers of gold on you know just one little patch of gesso because you know the gold would just not stick or the gold was too thinly beaten and you know it was it the the technicalities that i learned over this period um also decided the factor on my you know pocket so <laughs> so i had to learn quickly where which gold um that i need to you know go to and you know how do i um minimally you know spend and get the maximum you know effect but it takes time i you know i i i know how much i had spent initially a lot because one um the constant thing that i had in my head was like you know uh, to make the gesso it was so technical that you know to get the gesso made i had to ship a lot of things from outside lead being one of the part which is officially not allowed i'd be behind bars if i would get that <laughs> so i had to look for an alternative i did check with tony and we had a discussion of you know where do we get things and then the question comes how much do i stock up would they be good in the weather that i am in right now are they going to turn bad you know gold is still okay what about the other stuff you know um, you need to get a lot of other little 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 detail if you ask me about the gold and the burnisher burnisher is probably if you're careful it's going to stay with you for a good amount of time <laughs> and um, you know at least if you're not like me you know um, i i constantly i'm in fear when the burnisher is around me because if i drop it <laughs> then i'm doomed i have to spend another you know a couple of dollars to get that but gold obviously because i am in a learning stage um i need i i prepared myself initially that's the reason i said if you want only shiny stuff happening and you know only for instagram please don't go because uh, this is an expensive art but if you learn it the right way if you have the patience to learn it the right way i don't think eventually you would know exactly you know how much and you know how much do you need and what do you need so initially yeah i i i started out i'm i'm still an amateur i don't call myself any expert but um over the period i learned a lot you know not just about gilding but yeah i mean how do i <laughs> budget it <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually um just chime in a bit um uh, when when i approach arthi to join the mentoring initiative i have we have never met we we've not spoken yeah. i just seen her on instagram and something that i noticed was her passion for learning she would not um stinge she doesn't stinge on learning she will spend she would attend courses she you know she is somebody who is like a sponge uh there is such a high level of commitment such a high level of excellence you know she she practices what she learns and i felt that that kind of um attitude would would be very honoring for the craft of gilding it's it's not like you know you say well you know i just want to have a instagram a shiny picture you know uh and and somehow i i think tony must have seen this in her as well you know so that we both kind of maybe we have the same baseline <coughs> uh to to think that uh for somebody to want to invest in this kind of learning it would require the amount of uh, commitment uh and dedication you know the honor the respect that she has for teachers for 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 a fellow learners you know so i i think that dr nan's question is so valid because certainly it is not something to be entered into lightly I mean you don't like ship you know slabs of marble or whatever from other parts of the world uh just to you know to indulge uh to to like wet your feet. So I mean I Tony I don't know whether you feel that um I mean what is your level of satisfaction in having engaged in this in this mentoring thus far? <coughs> Are you pleased with how it's going? Is it is it doing good to your soul? is it doing good to my soul oh what do i say about that <laughs> no it's been great actually um we're um the work is so exacting that i think it would be fair to say that we're all a little bit pressed for time um in that um unfortunately gilding is not only i'm really putting people off here but it's not only 
expensive, but it's incredibly time consuming. Um, so I sometimes wish with my Instagram head on that I could write a sentence and post it on Instagram and it would be done. Um, but I can work for, I don't know, six weeks on an illuminated piece. Um, so it's a little bit time consuming, a little bit. It's quite time consuming because it's technically very difficult. And we did talk about that right at the beginning, the three of us, and go, you know, what are we going to try and produce for the exhibition? Um, because it's all going to be slow. And we also talked about what the kind of focus should be for our time together. Um, and it was really interesting to hear Judith last time um, and her journey of self-expression, because we're a very different group. This is like, it's it's not so much to do with self-expression. Um, it's, it's a gilding masterclass, really. This is how do I give Artie and Susan my knowledge um, so that, you know, hopefully they can pass it on to other people. Um, because I'm going to take a back seat at some stage and go and quietly retire and, and pick flowers in my garden. Um, but yeah, so the idea was that it was, a, you know, a gilding masterclass. And um, having said that, I also learned from them and they, you know, they've both come to me and gone, how would I do this? You know, how would I do this technical piece of gilding? And I'd go, oh, I don't know. I've not done that before. Let me, leave it with me and I'll go away and find out. Um, so I think we've all learned from each other. And um, I think for me, that has been the collaborative aspect uh, and seeing these two nice smiley faces on Zoom regularly has been, has been just a joy actually. So yeah, I've loved it. I should be ready for a rest in February though. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm sure. So, would you like to chime in and share with us how has it been for you? Um, I think it's very interesting because for us, we knew, like Artie said, we knew each other coming into this. We met each other in Singapore. We got along quite well. Um, and then when this came about, I think what was the most exciting thing was we're gonna we were going to tackle this from different corners of the world. Tony was in England, Artie is in India, I'm in Singapore. So we each brought to it our own experiences, our own cultures, and just dealing with the temperatures, the weather, um, and trying to solve it intercontinentally. So it's, it's, and our monthly meetings have been very, very fun. We share a lot, we laugh a lot. Um, there have been days where we, <laughs> <laughs> didn't laugh as much but uh, yeah <laughs> but overall it's been a very good experience yeah yeah it's wonderful so uh, I think do you want to carry on with the last bit of your presentation you have sure to now go. that um uh, Sue mentioned you know we all come from different cultures different continents I mean I would not say continents for me and Sue but you know different different cultures different backgrounds and uh, you know different uh, way of thinking as well you know when it comes when it comes to uh, tony um, she doesn't have a calligraphy background i am new to calligraphy uh, susan comes from a calligraphy background and you know she has all of us have different but you know i've done uh, other things like relief and you know like mosaic and um, being being a lot being in a lot of places and you know carrying a lot of uh, significance of our own cultures we wanted to see how uh, you know things would blend into uh, this beautiful art of gilding you know how can we contribute a piece of us you know into uh, our gilding or you know like like uh, tony said um, she learned from us you know it was it's, it's basically more about the culture more about you know like like we have the tanjore art here our own uh, you know it's 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 not um, I can't compare it to the gilding that happens, but then it's 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 again you know using the gold leaf that you know um, that we have in our own country and you know how do we use it and it is more of a very traditional art again here you know which 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 can temporarily or you know for, or predominant uh, uh, you know dominantly uh, happens in the south of India 
and likewise there are a lot of gold elements that are used in different cultures in different parts of you know um, uh, india as a country you know we we have so many so many different uh, blends of um, um, art and uh, culture and tradition coming in from all parts of india as well india is extremely culturally rich so you know uh, tony had given us a base on um, how do we go about it should we have a theme you know and then uh, i think sue uh, came back and tony came back saying you know nature let's let's keep nature as a theme but then at the same time since you know we are in an advantage of being in different countries and having different cultures how do we bring in an element of culture and nature and blend them together so like like it has already been said and told that it was not easy you know it's e so many hours of uh not just you know like like sue also mentioned we have me our meeting only once a month sometimes we never smiled it was very very serious <laughs> very serious it's not because you know we didn't like each other's face or we didn't you know it's it's basically because you know we felt burdened we did i mean you know uh, to be honest that you know we had to be ready with our pieces by you know this deadline of this month but then we all had our own things going on and gilding doesn't happen in a day i mean we done and you know it's done we kept it and it doesn't often happen perfectly so you know there are so many mistakes like i said initially you know we have to discard i have to discard so many of my pieces and it is frustrating the trials after trials the addition the deletion the throwing i mean it's it's painful <laughs> but you know once you are stuck to the idea of you know i need this you know um, uh, this is something that i'm very passionate about this is something that i can do and i have the support of you know these two wonderful ladies with me you know and and they've encouraged they have supported they have um, even contributed in you know how to how to go ahead you know how to do it and also went you know a step further to understand the culture that i am from and you know uh, learn from that and you know do the research on their end from that so uh that that was a tremendous help so you know you would now see how the giddy gilders not just laughed in zoom calls <laughs> but what happened behind the scenes just give me a second how oh, did that go okay there so for one we did a lot of study uh, we did ask tony about you know what is that we need to start with you know how do we know or study the traditional uh, uh, gilding that happened and we need to uh, if we need to be the torch bearers or if we need to you know uh, take this ahead you know what do we do so we had uh, a lot of references that she had given us we had gone through that for one and then i had to go back to you know like the culture that i said not just in uh, one aspect like you know you see the indian architecture here so much richness in the indian architecture so we uh, you see a lot of nature elements also in here you know the flowers uh, the pots the leaves so you know what element of this can i get into my art so we went to fabric textile uh, textile designs you know the uh, uh flowers motifs there in textiles the of course the indian gold zari uh, sarees you know where they would uh, have these silk woven uh, golden threads um how do i bring an element if i had to put this in um you know uh, a piece of work how do i do it and it it's not just with the art um we also discussed on how do we um give a niche to you know the uh, since the three giddy gilders are together now how do we um give it you know or move it probably turn it a notch high and try different surfaces not just you know paper maybe something else what else can we try how can we get inspired from all these you know arts that we have uh, you know in a culturally rich country like ours so that's kalamkari art that we see where it depicts a story how do we blend it with uh, gilding so the, here are a few of you know indian a uh, traditional art that we see that i drew i drew my inspiration from so we see mughal miniature paintings a lot of gold in there a lot of jewelry used to be you know designed with a lot of um, you know nature element in it that's pichwai art <clears throat> indian pottery which you know traditionally we have seen everybody has a pot in the house you know and um like i said initially it's the tanjore painting or the tanjore gold uh, 
you know element that we use you see on the top borders and you know the deity or the goddess or the god god or the goddess um, would be designed and you know probably um, given a very very beautiful decoration of a frame and we, we also used a lot of use a lot of um, elements of jewelry in it I mean not real ones now I think um, uh, back in the past when you know Tanjore paintings were made I think they used real emeralds and rubies on it now not much you know for that for the person who asked for how much is my budget <laughs> <laughs> so no uh, emerald or rubies there, but yeah, we are, we Giddy Gilders, you know, definitely have a lot to play and a lot to do, a um, lot to study, um, you know, behind all of this. Sorry, there's a friend of mine who's jumping. I have a cat here. <laughs> so I'm sorry if it jumps on my laptop. So the cat probably also wants to know about <laughs> the Giddy Gilders. So yeah, that's about it, Dorothy. Anything else that you would want me to... Thank you, thank you. I, I love it when you shared about how, you know, as, uh, as a part of your culture, you can try to cross-pollinate ideas. Uh, I think this is fascinating because, you know, Adi, you, you are the, you right now are the, the endangered uh, <laughs> species. <laughs> You know, who's attempting traditional gilding, making too much, too much weight on these tiny shoulders, I guess. It's okay. You have, <laughs> early start. You have a long, long uh, runway ahead and you have friends now to walk with you. You know, I'm very, very excited to see how, I, how you're so going to take so, so everyone, I. I, I, am, I know that some of you are here and very curious to know what are they going to be exhibiting, but this group is very secretive. They're refusing to show even sketches or anything, but you, you can get some clues from uh, Ardi. On saying, the sketches part. We, you know, um, we did discuss about this, you know, um, Tony, me and Sue, but then, you know, um, apparently... Each one of us have the same pattern to follow. We have a sketch here. We find a tiny bit of paper. We sketch it there. We go back and start working. Because one, we run short of time. We don't have so much of time to be, you know, spending on the pieces that, and we need to get something out before the exhibition, right? You don't want just one piece to be out there. So, so we need to work. So, you know, unfortunately, um, however much that I want to do it, um, I don't think, you know, uh, my mind really went there to sketch out something. There are sketches, you would come to see them as the real, you know, uh, pieces of art when they come out, but uh, they're all work in progress, you know, and there are a lot of sketches in my head right now. I'm sure Sue and Tony also have a lot of them there. So we are not, we're not the kind of group that sketches a lot. <laughs> we just mean business. <laughs> all right. All right. So we Absolutely. look forward to seeing your finished pieces. I am. Um, I I have done a piece inspired by artist Indian designs, um, that does have lots of gold. It's got a, a gold Indian border, and it does have emeralds in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow! Real emeralds. This is something. real emeralds. Yeah, <laughs> all around the border. So I'll 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 leave you that as a teaser. Oh my word. Okay, now I cannot sleep tonight. <laughs> I think we better start putting our uh, money into piggy banks, <laughs> waiting for the exhibition. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's going to be so awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah, Oja says, oh, it's a very rich piece. That will be exciting. Yeah. Does anyone have questions? that you want to ask our friends, our three Giddy Gilders? I have a question. Uh, yes. How, how do you think your mosaic of relief experience informs the way you think about gilding? Mm. Quite interesting. Um, thankfully, the theme was nature. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of my relief um, art is based on nature. So the elements of nature, the most common um, relief piece that you would probably see on my page uh, or, you know, if I had uh, posted some time back uh, is the tree of life. So a lot of elements of birds, leaves, flowers, and all of these motives, again, uh, you know, um, are inspired from the traditional Indian, um, what do you say, fabric or motifs or designs or, you know, the paisley designs that we have, the mehendi or the hina designs that we have. So it was easy for me to blend, but the difficult part was 
I knew how to do that, but how do I blend the gold with this one? No, how do I blend? I can't. I can't make the entire piece with gold. I don't think you would love it. <laughs> so I'm not a painter. So you know how how do I do it? That that was probably the difficult part. But um, once I you know we have these meetings together. You know we have three minds now, right? And one a very experienced one on that. You know, so it was it was easy to go back and say, okay, uh, I I've, I've tossed my ideas, a lot of my ideas to Tony and so. And um, uh, they did give their amazing feedback on it. Like, you know, ah, this, you know, I remember Tony, when I told, when, when we discussed the piece that has Emeril on it. <laughs> so we discussed on, you know, um, uh, what element of the Indian culture should go in there. And, you know, uh, how, how do you think it should be there? And, and um, the amazing part is like Tony had, you know, at the beginning of the uh, meet mentioned that, you know, it was a mo more of a collaborative uh, kind of a team. It was not a, you know, I'm the mentor. So here you go. This is your task. Come back after a month and you know, show your pieces. So it was more of a give and take more of a, um, uh, you know, inspire each other let's toss the ideas and see how this works let's refine it a bit you know so a lot of lot of that got inspired if you ask me about mosaic um not much <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you David. Uh, anyone else have questions oh tony sounds like a wonderful mentor how lucky she is she is <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it she is. <laughs> love you, Tony. Oh. Am I am I looking like a lovesick puppy? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> She's an amazing mentor. The man has a question. Would you like to unmute? Actually, you can just ask directly. Sure. Thank you. Um, hi. I wanted to ask, and this may be a very dumb question, but what's the oh. difference between the store bought gesso and the gesso you make? Oh, shall I answer that one? Yes, please. Um, the store-bought gesso is an acrylic gesso, and um, it's useful for priming a, a, a board or paper to paint on with acrylic. Um, there are two other, other kinds of gesso. Long answer, sorry. There's um, a gesso made of rabbit skin glue and whiting, which is used to make a board for egg tempera painting and water gilding. And the gesso we use has to be handmade because it's made of lead and sugar and a glue um, and some red clay um, and it's called manuscript gesso and it's 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 a very specific um, recipe based on a 15th century um, manuscript um, but it's good for this particular job but not much else. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Is Jamin, you are, were you raising your hand to ask a question? Jamin, that's the name that I see, but was it you that was raising your hand? Did you have a question? No, you didn't. <laughs> okay, just trying. <coughs> Anyone else? Oh, hey, hi, Arati. It was so uh, inspiring to hear you <laughs> and all these uh, pieces that I have seen. Oh, my God. They are looking like fabulous, <laughs> all gold in it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's nice. And, like I also want to try this one day. Hopefully, Tony will come up with the workshop. <laughs> I'm not sure when now. Everything is, we are still stuck with the pandemic. So not sure about yeah. that. But yeah, hopefully soon. And uh, so even I love your work a lot, the calligraphic work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we actually never met. Even I think. I never met Arati also. We talk a lot over, uh, you know, online, on Instagram or so, but never uh, really met. So it was good to see you, all of you. Mm, thank you. Pooja. Thank you, Pooja. Also, another question. Um, you were talking about how you learn a lot from mistakes, right? Do For all of you, do you have a favorite story of a mistake that taught you so much that <laughs> it's stuck in your heart, you know? <laughs> A favorite mistake story. Cool. Uh, yeah, shall I go first? Um, so I um, was doing a commission, big commission, um, big border, um, about so big, um, full of intricate little shapes. And I was laying gesso um, all around it, which is difficult. 
Um, so did that, gessoed it all, got to the, back to the beginning of the circle, all fine, let it dry, scraped it like you, see, you saw in an artist video, all perfectly level, um, looking, you know, perfect, spot on, burnished it nice and shiny, held it up to, to the light, no imperfections, all perfect. Deadline on the commission, of course. Um, went to gild it, started from the bottom, gilded all the way around the border all went brilliantly until I got almost back to where I started and there was a, a five millimeter bit of gesso that just wouldn't gild wouldn't accept any gold just a a spot same gesso same day same weather conditions same gold same everything just wouldn't stick um, that is my least favorite commission ever <laughs> uh, and I did it again actually oh, no. having cried a little bit I then went and did the whole thing again and did uh, something else went wrong in a different way um, and that is just the nature of gilding um, and in the end I went back to the first one so we're now several weeks down the line uh, and I'm feeling super stressed went back to the first one um, and managed to fix the five millimeter deficit. And it went off to the customers and they never, never noticed. <laughs> but, oh, there you are. That's traditional gilding for you. It's all super intense. <laughs> yeah, super stressful. Why do you do it, Tony? Why? <laughs> yeah, why do I do it? That's a really good question, actually. Um, and I think, I mean, I came into this through, um, oh, but how? I'll tell you, Belinda, in a minute. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm a painter and I got into illumination through making paint from rocks and um, plants and things. So I learned to do that first and then I thought I might as well learn how to gild. So it was completely by chance, really. But of course, once you start, you, um, you like to put, you know, do the next thing, you know, make it a little bit more difficult and just stretch yourself a bit and then see, you know, if you can, you know, do something slightly more technically difficult and then slightly more technically difficult again. And, um, but I am, I am ready probably for a little break from it now, having done this um, for, um, I've worked full time on it. And I mean, seven in the morning till 10 at night since every day of the week, including taking work on holiday since 2015. So I've now done a lot of gilding and I'm ready for a little rest and to do something else. So, um, yeah, what should I try next? Oh, stained glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a new challenge. Maybe I'll learn how to cook. That would be a miracle, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, so, Belinda, um, the way I fixed it in the end was um, I got a little bit of loose leaf gold on a brush and a, a damp paintbrush in the other hand. And I put a little bit of water over the gesso that wouldn't accept the gold, dropped the gold leaf onto it and went away and made, made a cup of coffee. <laughs> and um, when I came back, it had stuck. So, it, yeah, that was that was it. What about the Sue? What is your least favorite memory? Um, so I remember when I took a class in Hong Kong with Tony. This was back in 2019. And for some reason, the gesso wouldn't work for me. I, it just wouldn't stick to the piece that I was doing. So I would go home, uh, not home, I'd go to the hotel bring my work with me, go to the hotel, try my level best to stick it. And I was breathing very heavily on it and it stuck somewhat, but in the process, the gold stuck all over the wooden table, the glass table that was in the hotel. So I lost a lot of gold and it was all in the hotel, not on my piece. Um, yeah. And the, and it stuck on, but, the next day, it would all fall off. And I remember going to Tony and going, it's not working. And she was, <laughs> 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 and 
and we tried everything to try to get it to work. And I like workshops where I make mistakes because that's the only way to learn. Because if you don't make the mistake in the workshop, you don't know what you're doing wrong. And you, when you get home and you make that mistake, you don't have someone to teach you what to do. So I love making mistakes in workshops. So that was good fun. It is, it was, it's, you can laugh about it now, but it's not funny when you have a book of gold leaf just getting stuck all over the glass table and flying all over the workshop. Do you remember that, Tony? The gold is just flying everywhere. Yeah, and we couldn't get the gesso to dry because it was 94% humidity. It was, uh, yeah, it was challenging, that was. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Artie, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have, like I said, I don't have as much experience as you two, but this one year, like Tony said, you know, I would I would sit on my desk at probably um, 10, 30, 11 in the morning and would probably get up at around eight in the evening. And all I would do is, you know, practice pieces after pieces. And then there was this actual piece that I had to make for a very, very dear friend of mine. Um, and I remember I had made the first piece and, you know, no matter what, and it was, it was crazy weather, crazy weather. I mean, it was raining like crazy and the humidity levels were crazy. I had the AC, you know, blowing at probably 21 degrees. And no matter what I do, the gold just wouldn't stick. Just wouldn't. It was like, like Tony said, you know, I did, I, I, you know, went through all the no's and I was like in a panic state because I had to dispatch it the next day through courier. And I was <laughs> panicking, like, damn it, what's happening? You know, I'm, I, I held it. I remember holding it up to the AC, you know, like, please God, you know, it's like an offering. <laughs> you know, do something. <laughs> you know, it has to stay. And uh, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't. So, you know, I had to get away from the table and I, I did, I did, you know, uh, make a silent prayer there that, you know, tomorrow morning I would sit here, you know, I, I would come sit probably at seven in the morning and by 10, I should be able to finish this because I had to paint, you know, as a rule, you know, Tony has taught us first to gild and then paint. So my painting was not done. So it was just the gilding and the paper was blank with gesso on it. And I was like, damn it, I had to send this. How do I do it? And then you won't, you won't believe what I did. It was a new practice that I learned during that humidity period. I would carry my piece everywhere where the AC was on. You know, if I leave the room, the piece leaves with me. You know? <laughs> yeah. The piece leaves with me. And it, and it, it was probably the royal child there, you know. Uh, <laughs> I ignored everybody at home, including myself. You know, whatever condition that we are. If we're sweating like a pig, okay. But then the, the, that piece has to be right in front of the AC. And I remember sleeping with it. It was right next to me. Yeah. I had a, I, I had a small, uh, you know, table or a bench put there. I put the piece there. The AC, I made sure I didn't get the air of the AC. The AC air went all to that piece. And then in the morning, I was very determined. I said a very little prayer. prayer and, you know, I came and I stuck the gold. Thank God it stuck. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. I had to finish. I burnished. And then I had to paint. And I had to pack. And I, I made my husband run. It go. It has to leave today, <laughs> and I give it to him. And thankfully, it reached safely, and the gold was still on. My biggest fear was, what if it falls off midway? <laughs> but thankfully, it did. So I learned a lot about humidity and temperature there, and I knew how you know what happens if my heart falls off, and you know how to bring it back to life. You know that that day my prayer worked. I mean, the Lord listened to me. <laughs> So you'll right. you'll gather that there's a there's a certain amount of both giddiness and hysteria oh, and yes. stress. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah. you have to. My laugh. folks couldn't understand. My folks couldn't understand what went wrong no. with me. Why did I become a psychopath overnight? <laughs> yeah. So I'd, I'd like to say we're I'd like to say we're all normal people, but I do wonder <laughs> listening to this. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> And this sleeping is being recorded, your, thanks. <laughs> yeah, sleeping with your guests, so <laughs> not dry. <coughs> yeah. But I understand now why you call yourself the giddy gilders. <laughs> yeah. Because I think in the face of that, the situations that you cannot help, you know, the humor really does save your sanity. Learned a lot of yeah. patience. Learned a lot of patience. 
<laughs> laugh at yourself laugh at situations you know i'm i used to be a control freak trust me <laughs> Oh, yeah. and i'm getting better right. thanks to tony <laughs> so yeah i think we've come to the end of an hour it's been really fast uh thanks are the tony and susan this has been so inspiring i don't know about you but somehow hearing the stories of you know failures <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll struggle and uh, and then knowing that this is the reality and this is what it takes. Uh, and then yet having that commitment to to improving or to producing that final piece. I mean, this has really been so uplifting. Don't know about the rest, but I really enjoyed myself. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Dorothy. Pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah. Thank you. So, Tony, there is a question about whether you will do this this. Uh, mentoring again <laughs> uh, not not immediately for sure um i've got a long-term project on the go as well and i shall need a bit of a break to um concentrate on that um so there is hope or, then. <laughs> yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say never um and it would depend who i was working with um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'd never do it. But I need. I need a break to um, just concentrate, uh, yeah. partly on developing my own work, uh, which I haven't had much time to do during the last uh, wherever it's been six. since twenty fifteen. Yes, six, six years. years. Um, so it'd be nice to just have a, a think about doing something a bit different. And um, as I say, I've got a, a kind of five or six five to six year project on the go as well, completely unrelated to. Um, illumination at this level at the kind of, kind of masterclass level so um maybe not straight away but maybe thanks that's good to know thank you everyone <clears throat> so yeah thank you to the three giddy guilders thanks for bringing so much laughter to our lives too for sharing <laughs> Yeah, so we look forward to looking at your uh, uh, exhibit uh, pieces as well as your journey, all the film pieces, <laughs> the sketches and so on. You made yeah. us all really curious to see what you have at the exhibition. We didn't get to see much uh, of your team as well, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> secret yeah, thing, secret thing. <laughs> It was good anticipation, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. So till the next time. I think next time we will we are going to have Lisette, uh, who is with mm. uh, Marina's group. So Lisette's background, she is uh, an architect, and uh, it's been very interesting how she brings her three D, you know, three dimensional thinking into her calligraphy as well as her art exploration so we'll we'll post the dates and timing when when she's up all right Great. thanks dorothy <laughs> thank you thank you thank you good night everyone belinda if you want to stick around i can answer your question okay. all right Yeah, fine.